Steve Kerr singing Clay Thompson's defensive praises, plus 30 on the afternoon. Let's hear from him. Steve just credited you for your defense um, all afternoon and, and just sticking with it when your shot was maybe wanted it to be until it started falling uh, <laughs> down the stretch. I mean, how, how much does that energy does that take to just keep sticking with it? Uh, I mean, I've been in this league long enough to know that if you don't have a great shooting night, you can do other things to impact the game. And I pride myself on being a basketball player and can always control your attitude and effort. And uh, although I was four for 19, which is disgusting, a plus 30, I'll take that. That's better than a last game, you know, minus 28. So I was thinking about that and uh, just being able to space the floor and take great looks and, you know, they'll go in hopefully game one of the semis. Clay, you guys allowed only 42 points in the second half. Mm -hmm. um, I think none in the first three or four minutes of the fourth quarter. What sort of triggered that? Because, I mean, as you know, you guys weren't great yeah. defensively on the road this year. Steve made the point that you're, you're just different now with Wiggins back, Peyton obviously in the mix. But, but what, what in your mind sort of elevated your defense when it mattered most? I think just attention to detail. I think we all uh, limited them on the glass. Spaced the floor really well. Didn't let them get that out in transition like they have been previous games. And uh, I got to give Kavon and so much credit. I mean, his third 20 rebound plus game of the series. And that just uh, stifles a team when they can't get second chance opportunities like they did previously. And uh, just a group effort, but shout out to Steph. I mean, what an incredible all time performance to go for 50 in a game seven. That's a. Uh, it's just a joy to share the backcourt with him, and he never ceases to amaze me. Hey, Clay. Uh, after winning games five and seven here, how good does it feel to put the rest that this team can't win on the road? Um, well, maybe this year was tough, but we've got guys who've been running on the road for a decade now, and, I mean, you can't buy into the narratives from the media because uh, you got to really b dig deep and believe you're capable of anything, and uh, whether it's a one road win or two road wins, uh, usually when you want to win a championship, you got to get one on the road or two at least. And for us, it was really about just relying on our experience and just being ready to match their physicality. As someone who yourself has had just incredible shooting performances, high scoring nights, but has also played with Steph for you know, over a decade, what is it like? Neck, being next to him when he's in his own, especially as someone who probably is familiar with that feeling. Oh, wow. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> that's the best. I mean, especially when you have an off night yourself or the team, no one really shot it particularly well except for Steph. And there's a reason he's a two-time MVP, a finals MVP, is because he uh, pushes us over the top in moments like this. And... When he's in the zone like that, you try to just get him in his spots, get him the ball, get out the way. And uh, gosh, what an incredible performance. This is a game seven I'll forever remember as the Steph Curry game. And he's just uh, a joy to watch and play with. I mean, I really, truly enjoyed just, like I said, sharing the backcourt with him. Hey, Clay, before this game, there was a lot of talk about championship DNA. And some people don't think that's a real thing or they scoff at that, that term. Did we just see that in action? Yeah, I mean, 50 points from our best player, holding them to 38% from the field, 26 from three. It sounds like championship DNA to me. And when you do it, you know, four times, I would never doubt a champion, especially who's been there and done it routinely. What, what kind of changed for you guys after halftime you were down by two and then just really had an inspiring like third quarter rebounding wise and also scoring? Uh, Steph got hot. We got a lot of good looks at the rim. We were getting to the free throw line consistently, and we limited their second chance opportunities. And uh, although we were missing free throws, just the fact that we were um, being physical and getting to the line, it's uh, demoralizing for a defense. And uh, I think that ability just really spread them out afterwards. I know you obviously haven't dug into the film, but um, Lakers, quick turnaround Tuesday. Just early thoughts on that matchup overall and, and facing LeBron in another playoff series. That's special. I mean, play, play, play LeBron in the finals four times. Uh, obviously one of the greatest to ever play, and 
Anthony Davis is, you know, right there as well. Played AD in the playoffs too, and they have. Uh, watching that last series against Memphis, it looks like they're gelling and their guys know their roles. Uh, the other guys besides those two, and it's going to be a huge challenge for us. But we're all excited to play the Lakers. I mean, it's a legendary franchise and uh, Warriors Lakers. I don't. I, it's been a long time since they've seen each other in the playoffs, and um, I know I'm personally excited. I get to play in front of my father, my mother, my some of my best friends, and go down to SoCal after our homestand and. It's just a dream come true. I've, I've, I've waited for this for 12 years. Clay, we, you've mentioned it. Coach Kerr mentioned it. You guys have been doing this for a decade. And at the top of the game, what motivates you to keep going at the level that you keep going in? Uh, you just want to look back on your career with no regrets. You want to look back and say you gave everything you, have, you had and um, just be, we just know how, uh, elusive it is to be in this position and you know the Warriors were in somewhat of a drought before we got here uh, 40 years Oakland hadn't seen a championship so to have another chance at one um, it's uh, special I mean when you uh, can be a part of a dynasty and continue that run as long as you can you uh, will do everything in your willpower to help the team and uh, I know we all will continue to do that and it's just a special opportunity right now for us to continue to try and win these hard playoff series. Clay, what stands out to you just from coming here this series about the atmosphere inside this building in particular? And, and what's it say about Steph to have that performance in a game seven in that atmosphere that a lot of people think is one of the loudest in the league? Um, well, I mean, Sacramento fans are great. Obviously don't like the obscenities they said to Draymond, but other than that, they uh, were behind their team for seven games, and especially those first two games, it was incredibly loud in here. And for Steph to do what he did tonight just shows what he's made of. I mean, he has nothing to prove anymore, but he continues to just take his game to another level, and uh, we all will continue to follow him. And then on top of that, um, I just got to give Mike Brown and their coaching staff and their players a ton of credit pushed us to the brink. Mike B's got those guys playing incredible ball on both sides of the floor. And I know they have a bright future here. Their star players are very young. Uh, so I just know uh, the Kings franchise in good hands with uh, Mike Brown at the helm. Clay, nice. to that point, uh, you this is your 28th playoff series. Mm -hmm. And in that time, of course, the Kings franchise has not been. So for you guys, like, is this a, a memorable series when you talk about quality of play, opponent? Absolutely. It's the first time I think we faced each other in the history of the game. So um, it doesn't matter if it's the first round. They were the three seed, we were the six seed. It was a tough battle. And, uh, yeah, I'll remember this one for a long time. Travel was nice, you know, just having to go 80 minutes up the freeway. And uh, it's cool to see another fan uh, you know, great fan base just up the freeway. You kind of take that for granted sometimes that there's two uh, fan bases, you know, fighting for Northern California dominance. So it uh, feels good to be on top this time around. Before you bounce, who's Pops uh, rooting for? Ha, I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. If I had to guess, probably his employer. But uh, <laughs> I'm just excited. to. I have so many great memories with him watching uh, the Lakers, watching Kobe watching Shaq and Powell and the rest of the gang. So I'm just really excited to stick it to the team I, uh, or at least try to stick to the team that, you know, I grew up rooting for.